today we're gonna get out of the house to show you what I actually have on my person for our 2019 EDC update. Yeah, that's right folks, not an indoor video today. We're out and about doing a bunch of other gear testing on some 511 amp series backpacks around an urban environment. Around, the, around town and I wanted to do an impromptu EDC 2019 update for you. What I actually am carrying on my person today. So uh, excited to walk you through all the different items that we have. We have some return guests, items that I've been using for years. We have some new stuff uh, that you haven't seen before. So it's gonna be an exciting time, but we're gonna go break down what I actually have on my person, what I regularly carry with me. And throughout the video, uh, you don't have to worry about trying to write down stuff. And remember, we're gonna have links over to Amazon and Blade HQ for a lot of this stuff. So that you can hop on over there. That always helps us out, supports us, continues to help us do what we do, make content like this. So we appreciate it when you guys use those hyperlinks, as well as don't forget around about our Knock Around Sungrass affiliate link. Uh, as well as our backcountry.com. So that'll help us continue to make the content that you guys see here week in, week out. So with that, let's break it down, see what I got on my person. So in the new year, I've tried doing something a little bit different and carrying uh, basically like a compact blowout kit in my pocket and coming up with an idea and with a concept that is slim enough and small enough to be able to carry in your back pocket, basically slightly thicker than a wallet, uh, or in your cargo pocket like I do, you know, I wear these 5.11 Apex pants about five days a week. So I just did a Ranger Band and a SWAT T tourniquet and a Cellox um, Rapid Bandage. So it's got the blood clotting material, you know, th this is uh, recommended by the U.S. military, that's what they use as Cellox and passes all of their um, stringent tests, but it's not just the powder, it has the band, it's a uh, five foot bandage as well that the clotting material has been included in. So uh, I've been carrying this, it's been working. I both carried it in my back pocket as well as in a cargo pocket, and it seems to be doing the trick. And again, this isn't like a boo boo kit for cuts and scrapes. I know that's going to happen way more frequently. I'm not as concerned about that. I just wanted to carry something that if there was a major wound that occurred because of some sort of situation that I could at least try and stop the bleeding until first responders arrive. So that's kind of the concept, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts as well. If either you think I should add something to this, uh, take something out, uh, a different type of medical system, but it's got to be carryable every day that either fits in my cargo pocket or in the back pocket and isn't going to be this big lumpy mess. So uh, that's what I've been doing with my EDC system for an on-person medical kit at all times. And I just want to say I'm not a medical professional, so do all of this at your own risk. Know how to handle um, tourniquets and, and blood clotting material. Know your responsibilities as a citizen if you come upon somebody uh, in injury and all of the risks that go along with that. So do that all at your own risk. But I think it is something that's important and to be aware of and be trained in and have a common knowledge of in case you run into that emergency situation. So next up, we're gonna hit EDC flashlights. What am I carrying on my weak side that I carry every day? And I have two options for us. We're gonna look at the first one that I actually have on me today. And that's gonna be a Streamlight ProTac L1-AA. So this is gonna run off of either a AA battery or a CR123 battery. So that's really cool that it gives you dueling you know, capabilities with the power source. Now what makes me really gravitate to this is that we got great aluminum body, we got a good brand, name brand in the Streamlight, the dueling battery sources. Now the AA I believe is gonna give you, uh, if I remember off the top of my head and I'll annotate it in, but I think it's 150 lumens max. Um, and then the CR123 is gonna give you 350 lumens in it max, but it's gonna have a strobe feature, it's gonna have a low feature, it's programmable, you have a nice recess button, so it's, not, it's less likely for it to accidentally go off in your pocket. It's got a nice protector there around the lens that you could also use as a non-lethal glass breaker of like a car window, something like that. Just a really good size fit and then a double loop over. So not only can I carry it in my pocket, but I can attach it to the bill of my hat if I need to, to use it as a headlamp if I wish, lanyard hole, just really well built. Been using it for several months now. I've been very happy with it. Uh, and it's not gonna break the bank. I believe it's gonna go usually around $40 over on Amazon. Again, obviously all the links to Blade HQ and Amazon below. Uh, so totally, totally digging this. This is my preferred. If I need to go a little bit lighter, a little bit slimmer, because it is, you know, it's thick, it's it's larger, you know, than, than some flashlights out there, then I go with the Streamlight MicroStream USB rechargeable. So cutting away, uh, if I'm not carrying the ProTac, then this is the other one, um, the, the MicroStream USB. So there's the USB rechargeable port right there, closes up. You got that quick 
actuating button to two settings high and low high is 250 lumens low i think is like 40 or something like that double loop over pocket clip weighs almost nothing i think it weighs like three ounces not two ounces maybe um so you can wear it on your bill of your hat deep ride carry pocket very lightweight very compact just to give you perspective there compared to the streamlight that we looked at earlier and diameter wise you can see there as well, much, much smaller in diameter. So fantastic options either way you look at it. And this guy will also go for about $35 to $40. The black version will give you low first, then high. The Coyote tan version will give you high first, then low, which is kind of weird that it's color combinated like that. But uh, just so you know, depending on what action you're wanting, which lumens you're wanting to hit first, tan is more tactical, giving you high first. Black is more EDC friendly, giving you a uh, low first. So folks, uh, either one of those I believe is going to be an awesome EDC option for you. Just kind of depends on if you like USB rechargeable lights and want something a little bit slimmer, or you like the option of dueling power sources, depending on availability. Both are amazing and both are really my go-tos for my EDC flashlight system right now. So I'm going to talk pocket knives with you, give you a couple different options, not only OTFs, autos, but manual folders as well that really connect with me as great EDC options. So the, what I'm EDCing right now is my second OTF. What we got rocking right here. Really excited about this one. We have a collaboration with Hogue and H&K. Now Benchmade used to own and partner with H&K. They dropped that. Hogue picked it up. So this is kind of like Hogue parts, H&K model on there. Uh, really cool blade. Uh, gonna be a little bit cheaper than Benchmade's. Uh, if you remember, I had some issues with my Phaeton um, not deploying all the time. So this one I've had for a few days now and have fired it probably hundreds of times without any issues uh, on the mechanism. So this is what I'm EDCing right now. I like it because it's lightweight. Got USA made uh, 154 CM steel and just a really good smooth action, loop over deep ride. I mean, and really for me, when I think of EDC, I think of slim and lightweight. I don't think of like super beefy and bulky. Uh, I will give you one or two options that kind of fit into that category of my favorites that we'll jump to right now. But um, this is a great option if you're thinking of saving a little bit of money and you want an OTF that you still want, you know, great quality. So I know I said no tabletop, not entirely true because I couldn't carry other options. This is option part. Whoosh. Here we go, great EDC tool right here, the morsel. Look at that, that's like half the length of my arm right there. <laughs> Just kidding, don't EDC this thing, but uh, we'll be doing a quick video on that in the near future. Really cool concept, long multi-spork. Uh, it's about twice as long as your average light my fire spork. So, you know, let's just leave that right up there. That'll be our... Uh, line of demarcation to show us what else we're looking at. So um, first off, I'm going to go lightweight. So the, the lightest of the bunches that we're going to look at here today, um, polymer base for both. I have the Spyderco Manix 2, you got it, and the Bug Out from Benchmade. Um, now, these are just other options that I'm telling you I find mostly in my pocket if I'm not testing out another knife. You know, we test out so many blades here. I love tons and tons of knives. I mean, I literally have like 15 over here on the table right now. Of those, tons of them I love and carry regularly. But these are the ones that I find I most gravitate to, that I can most recommend to you for EDC stuff uh, in particular. So I'm going to give you a couple different options here. So these are the lightest of the bunch. Both are going to come in at under three ounces. This guy's going to come in at 1.9 for the Benchmade. This one's like three ounces even. Okay, next up, I'm going to show you the autos, and this is where that heavy thing comes into play. Now, first off, right out of the gate, I find myself carrying this blade just so often. The Boker uh, Kalashnikov 74. This, this thing is so sick. I mean, you can get them on sale at Blade HQ often. Again, links below for like $30. If not, regular price is like $40. The Aus 8 Steel, they've done a really nice heat treat on. I mean, it's on par with like what Cold Steel does with their Aus 8. Uh, so it's going to hold a very nice edge. Uh, they have lots of different blade shapes. This is a uh, Blade HQ exclusive olive green with kind of a, a copper finish. Clip points, full flat grinds, uh, dagger, dagger style, tanto, serrated, knot. And, and I've had this for a long time now, I think like two, three years. And the action is still just as snappy as the day I got it. Super snappy. Really like that a lot. Just very fine precision tip with the buoy. 
Just love the look of it. The handle grip is very nice, ergonomic, but also tactical in its feeling. And then a really nice loop over handle or a pocket clip. If you're looking for beefy and you want an auto or just you know beefy in general, and I do believe they still make some manual versions of this, the Gerber 06 S30V steel, USA made, aluminum handle scales over steel liners, great action, huge blade, very broad. Um, the cutting edge is three and a half. Uh, it's just like 3.6, I think, to the handle. Great belly, saber grind, large blade, great guard there. You know, a palm. I mean, this is a hard use, hard, hard, hard use knife that I really like a lot. Uh, righties again only. Um, I, but man, I mean, I can get up and do finer work if I need to, or I have huge traction for harder prying and stabbing and, and those type of tasks. So those two are, are the most EDC'd autos that I currently have in the collection. Not that the other autos that I've reviewed aren't used a lot, they are. These are just the most used. So then finally, I'm gonna give you class. Uh, if you're looking for something that's classy, uh, man. So the Zero Tolerance 0609 did that recently. CPM, what is it? The CPM 20 CB steel, ball bearing bushings, titanium, everything, uh, ambidextrous. Love that knife so much. Great, great blade. Uh, right now, last I checked, 180, usually about 220, or yeah, $220, uh, totally worth it. It was kind of like a grail knife for me and I EDC it regularly for like high class stuff. Nice, you, you, you wanna flaunt the fact that you're kind of a knife tool, knife guy, um, knife jerk, and that you have nice things and that you can afford nice things and you like nice things. That That's a great option. The Benchmade, but it will actually, uh, absolutely perform. The Benchmade, um, this was a first production run of the Mini Crooked River. Love this thing. Great performer, S30V. The faux wood or dye wood um, handles with the aluminum bolsters. I mean, just such a nice knife. Ambidextrous right there. About 180. Um, great, great, great. And then love the grandpa setup. I just, I always love showing this to you guys in this type of video. So I'm doing a hitch and timber pocket pouch there. Um, great little setup. Again, all these will be in links in Amazon below and stuff. So that's, that's a kind of a coin pouch setup. This is a buck, uh, Ranger 112 that I have put a quick thumb stud on. Those will go for about eight bucks. Screws on, doesn't damage the knife in any way. So I can then open it, open it one handed. And then this is on 5160, hopefully you guys can see that in there, 5160 boss heat treat um, with blacked out wood handle scales. So these are kind of like my dress up, nice, classy uh, church knife, out to dinner knife, uh, board meeting knife, you know, whatever it is. Those, these are really what those fit into and I carry those regularly when I'm looking for more of a classier, classier blade. So, there you have it folks, uh, you know, carrying an EDC blade in my opinion, and we did a recent video, uh, full size multi-tool or EDC knife uh, with a mini multi-tool. And as you can see, I, my preference is more that I lean for a full size regular EDC knife and then a smaller compact multi-tool is what I regularly carry on my body on a regular basis. So I hope a few of these uh, blade ideas have just sparked your interest and definitely given you some ideas for a good EDC folder. I can't recommend this list enough. I love each one of them and they've performed very well for me over the years. So we're gonna move on to the strong side and look at my keychain and what I got on the keychain here. And uh, it's gonna be a multi-tool. You know, um, last year I kind of introduced us to, and I actually never did a review on it. Uh, hopefully one day I'll get to it. The Leatherman Juice S2 is my favorite. Um, it, it's basically, a, a, I would say like a medium, um, the in, beginning of a medium size multi-tool, uh, definitely bigger for, than some people's comfort level. And so the, the Leatherman Juice is still an amazing, or excuse me, the Leatherman Squirt is still an amazing keychain multi-tool. I, I kind of float back and forth between them, uh, depending on really the time of year. Winter time, I tend to use this a little bit more because I'm having heavier pants and, and that. And then summertime, I tend to put the Squirt back on the keychain. Um, and tend to use that because you're in basketball shorts a lot and you know you just don't want this big heavy multi-tool. So it depends on the, the time of year, or the type of clothing you wear, but I love this uh, Juice S2 because it has two or three, excuse me, accessible tools. We have a slip joint, so around the world is accessible. Nice little blade there, very sharp, 420 high carbon. Pops back into place there, nice and easy. Then you got your can opener bottle opener, easily accessible without having to open the tool and a really nice pair of scissors there. 
So that's all awesome. And then when you open the tool, you're gonna get an actually decent sized pair of pliers, needle nose, you know, smaller bolts. You can definitely cut some 12 gauge wire without, with that without issue. And then you're gonna get yourself your 3D Phillips head, and you're gonna get three different sets of flat heads from precision to pretty bulky. You could almost use this as an awl depending on how thick the material is that you have to punch through. So th that's why I really like this. It gives you a lot of capability and it's still compact enough and light enough to carry in your pocket on a regular basis. And then again, going to the squirt when I'm having light, lighter duty stuff, basketball shorts, like I said, and things like that. So um, that's what really the multi-tool situation that I'm carrying when I'm carrying uh, the EDC you know, system. And I love both the juice and squirt. And I do see for me personally value in some sort of light duty pliers in my EDC system. Uh, you know, I've tried using Swiss Army knives that don't have pliers and uh, there is some value to them. They tend to have more value for me out in the woods, but I, I always tend to use those pliers at least a couple times a week. And so that's valuable to me. And that's why I stick with Leatherman or another multi-tool, you know, that it has pliers on it and not going with more like a Swiss Army knife style of multi-tool on my keychain. On to the wallet, and it's the same as last year, and I'm just gonna give you an update on how it's holding up, is the Travel Lambo. Picked this up on Amazon for about $12, I believe. Um, it's, you know, um, leather, nice suede there. It's gonna give you two pockets on each side and then a third in here that'll hold your credit card. So I, I can get about 12 to 13 cards easily in here without it, you know, bulging out too badly. I like how slim and sleek it is. It's got a nice uh, money pocket portion right here. It is starting to pull away at the seams just a little bit right here. Uh, I mean, I'm sure this is still has plenty of years of life left in it, but that stitching is kind of starting to come apart just a hair uh, right there. So I just wanted to point that out to you. And then it does have that RFID blocker um, in material to keep people, you know, from ripping off your numbers and stuff like that. But still rocking that. I've uh, been using it daily for over a year now and don't have any plans to upgrade it at this point in time. So if you have the ability in either your country or state to conceal carry, I highly recommend getting trained so you know what you're doing, so you're not just a cowboy running around, um, but be trained, but also take the time to get your concealed carry. It could be the difference between life and death between you and a loved one. Um, so I'm not gonna bust out a firearm right now. I got a little one rocking right here. So uh, I carry it in both appendix and at like my, what would that be, four or five o'clock. It just kind of depends on the season and which firearm I'm carrying. We're gonna break down my two favorites and the two that I swap in between. And we'll break that all down as we hop over to the tabletop. Okay, after getting home, uh, busted this one out of the safe, busted this one out of my pants. And uh, we'll clear these guys here real quick. Nothing in there, nothing in there. So ready to rock and roll. So um, the th two things we'll go with holsters, holsters first. CYA holsters, you can get them on Amazon, links below. Uh, I love them, USA made. Uh, they have a lot of options out there. They don't use Kydex, they use like Bolioron, I believe is how it's pronounced or something like that. It's a, it's a, it's a type of plastic that's even more heavy duty uh, um, and stronger than Kydex. So like that a lot. They come standard with the clips. I have added with my Glock um, a rubberized loop over so I can attach it to a belt and just have an extra level of security there. You can do it either way. The reason I keep the clip on my Smith & Wesson is because my Smith & Wesson, I love it. It's slim, it's lightweight. We've never had jams. I have one, this is mine without the safety. I gave my original one to Mrs. GT with the safety. She just feels a little more confident with that, likes that a little bit more. Um, either way you slice it, they have so many options. You can get them easily for about 300 or less. Uh, I have put, with this one, about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 rounds through. My original, I've put about 5,000 rounds through at this point. Not a single jam. All kinds of different ammo. Great feeder, great user, feels ergonomic. I'm a better shot often with this than I even end with my Glock. Um, it's just a great shooter. It's not, a lot of subcompact pistols are very harsh to take to the range. So you don't really like shooting it. So you don't get very accurate with it. You don't get very confident with it. That's not the case with the Smith & Wesson M&P shields. They're very fun to shoot. They're ergonomic and they feel good. So it's enjoyable to shoot them. So you're more likely to shoot them more often. You're more confident with them. And then if you ever need to use it, you're ready to rock and roll and have confidence in your firearm. So uh, this is more of uh, my um, warm season because it's just slimmer, more lightweight. I can clip this onto a pair of basketball shorts if need be or something like that. And that's why I keep the clip on. This is more of my cold weather or just like bulkier clothing. Or if I'm going somewhere where there's just 
a higher probability. I'm going to maybe a town I'm not familiar with, so I don't know what I'm going to experience. I'm going to an environment where there's lots and lots of people and large crowds, and I don't know what's going to be happening. Then I, I will tend to carry my Glock more or in cold weather conditions um, just because I have 15 rounds versus the 8 plus 1. So I have 15 plus 1 or 8. So I mean, that that's significant. And, and I see value in that. And it is a firearm that I enjoy carrying in a concealed carry situation. Um, either one is going to be fantastic to go with just depending on what size you're looking for, how many rounds you want. Um, but love them both and highly recommend them. So there you have it, folks. And the, the main things I can encourage you with is be trained, follow, follow the laws, be smart about it, carry it obviously at your own risk uh, and, and get to a point where you're confident so that you can carry it with one in the chamber. I know some people they're a little nervous about it and they don't carry one in the chamber. That's like driving without your seatbelt on and expecting to be able to put your seatbelt on before you get in a wreck. It's not going to happen. So get to a confidence level that you feel that you can carry it with one in the chamber so that you're ready to go in case of that emergency situation and that life and death situation where you have to defend yourself or a loved one. So I always like doing this a little different, throwing some clothing options in there. My limited edition GI Joe knockaround sunglasses kind of got the whole kick going. Love those things. Go check out knockaround again, you guys. Just great, great value. You can really express yourself. That's a, a level of my expression of who I am, goofy and fun and loved the 80s and GI Joes all together. So you saw in the video, I wear this a lot. I've done a couple videos with this, the backcountry.com watch beanie. Really like this because it's a loose weave so I can wear it around town and in and out of uh, buildings. Uh, really tight weave beanies tend to get me overheated. So then I'm constantly taking them on and off and you know, you got hat hair and it's just not fun. So this, this, I like the style. I like that it's a loose weave. So it keeps my head warm enough out in cold conditions when I'm walking to the car, maybe a mile or something. And if I'm parking downtown or, you know, hanging out for the day, uh, or I can go into a coffee shop and I don't need to take it off because it doesn't overheat me for quite a while. So dig that a lot. Then, uh, you see me wear this all the time. It's my cool hat. I actually don't know the model number. I think it's like the renegade. Maybe I'll try and annotate it in backcountry.com again for that as well. Love this thing. Uh, wicks away sweat. I hike with these, hang out with them. They have a couple different color combinations. I mean, they're, they're super cool, fit me really well. And then finally, um, if you're not going to conceal carry on a regular basis, or you're doing the rubberized loop over, then the grip six belts are amazing. USA made super heavy duty. I think like 2000 pounds of uh, tension that they can handle. Uh, and then on top of that as well, they don't use any sort of clip system. They just use tension. So you just feed it through, you pull, and that thing does not slide. It's very sleek. You can get uh, a little bit longer size and just cut it and burn it if you want to. Tons of different color combinations and options. And again, USA made, I think they're like $35 on Amazon. Go check them out. Um, if you use clips for your CCW, then these, this tends to be a little too slim and they can sometimes slide off. That's part of the reason why I did the loop over on uh, that particular model. Um, in that case, or if you just like thicker belts in general, then there's you know dime a dozen. I use the 511 ones a lot. Um, so that, but if you like style options and a, a cool different concept and a clip op issue with a firearm is not something you're concerned about, these things rock. So you guys always want to know about my watch layout right now, still carrying my tried and true, uh, G shock gifted to me from, uh, my buddy, Bill, you're awesome. Appreciate it. I think this is like year four, maybe that we've been rocking it. Haven't swapped the battery. Haven't had a single issue with it. Uh, fantastic. You know, has the recess, um, uh, what's it called? Face, you know, so it hasn't gotten scratched up at all or anything like that. Really dig that aspect of it a lot. Uh, and then, you know, the band still holding up well, doesn't stink or anything like that. You know, got a little bit of soap scum in there because I don't take it off when I go in the shower. Um, so this has been a daily user for all those times. And then still rocking the Sunto, Sunto, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, what's called wrist uh compass so that clicks on there about 15 dollars glows in the dark 360 degree rotatable face and uh you know it's not uh, th this is, would not be my first choice to try and save my life in directions but it is accurate enough to at least get me going in the right direction go north go west go east you know i wouldn't be like uh, to the actual degree if i needed to find like somebody in a particular latitude and longitude uh, you know, and, and all the coordinates, that's an, I'm not going to be able to do that with this small, uh, um, what's it called, compass, but it will at least get me in the general direction if I need to hike out somewhere. Hey man, head north and I'm having a hard time finding the sun, it's at night, you know, whatever, it's going to be able to do that without issue. So totally digging that. You guys are always curious about my watch and what I'm wearing. So that is what I am wearing, about $40 for the watch, 15 for this guy, links below.
Well, folks, so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been informative, entertaining, but also giving you ideas and concepts maybe that you weren't thinking about before, gear items that you can begin to integrate and just make your EDC system that much better. But I wanna hear from you guys as well. What are maybe some ideas or concepts that I missed? things that you want to see in the future, ways that you EDC different things, everyday carry things, so that uh, maybe I can integrate them into my system. So that would be super cool to hear from you guys in the comments below. And stay tuned as well, because we're going to have an EDC bag update coming in about a week or two. We have a new bag. We have a lot of new gear in that as well. So you'll see that coming down the line very soon. Uh, please subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. We'd uh, love you to become part of the GT family, throwing up videos like this every single week. If you are a current subscriber, thank you. You're awesome. You rock. And make sure to hit that bell icon so that you make sure that the videos will show up in your news feed. Uh, and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media, throwing up videos like this every single week and behind the scenes stuff on the social media side. And finally, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.